Now, R. Kelly is back in the news again. Um, you know, he has been trying to get out on bail. He has actually been attacked in the jail. Um, his lawyer, Steve Greenberg, um, an excellent uh, defense attorney, has actually been kind enough to, um, to come on our show. It's a great honor. Steve, welcome to the show. Good morning. How are you? Or good afternoon um, now, I guess. Yeah, it's afternoon over here in Jersey. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, sir. Um, so, Steve, let me ask you, um, he's, is, is, he, is he only been attacked by one person and and if so, has he been receiving threats? Because as a high-profile inmate, in my experience, one of two things can happen. They can either be deified uh, by those prisoners that are in there, but others, especially those who may be charged with sex crimes, especially with minors, uh, can be a constant target. What's the atmosphere like there, Steve? Well, you know, it's a terrible situation to be in. Uh, Robert stays in a cell 24 hours a day, uh, rarely comes out of his cell, comes out to to take care of his personal things, comes out to make a phone call, stuff like that. But um, I don't know that, that a lot of inmates have threatened him. There are a number of inmates. He's the subject of threats right now. There's other inmates who uh, have, have made comments that they're gonna do physical harm to him. Obviously, you know from, from dealing with uh, criminal defendants, it's a badge of honor to some guys. This guy who, who beat him up, and beat him up quite severely. Uh, we just got the video, it's awful what occurred. Uh, this guy who beat him up is spending the rest of his life in jail. There's no downside to him. He was a multiple murderer. He shouldn't have been housed in the same area as Robert, and he was. So the jail officials really failed him there. But it, it gets to the larger issue, which is he shouldn't be locked up anyway, as we've been saying all along. He's not a flight risk. He's not a danger to anybody. He should be out. They can't give him a trial date. And it, it's, it's just a colossal mess. Yeah, Steve, a lot of a lot of uh, defendants are making and filing these bail motions for the very reasons you stated, that they don't need to be there, they're not a danger to the community, and with COVID, their cases are expanding uh, so much more in time, and they're not moving. Uh, but there are allegations here, and other individuals have been charged with regard to the potential and alleged manipulation of uh, witnesses and victims in the case. Uh, the, the, is that being argued by the prosecution in the case? Are the U.S. attorneys basically saying, Look, he's a risk, he's a danger to those individuals. And the second question I have, if you can answer that, is the jail's response uh, to protecting your client is that they were going to remove, and in fact did remove the attacker. So as far as they're concerned, they feel that he's a risk um, to at least the witnesses and other individuals involved in the case. They feel he's a potential flight risk. And they basically say, hey, judge, your honor, um, everything's copacetic now because we removed that one guy. What do you say to that? Well, I say that that's not going to solve the problem because that one guy made threats. Those threats were brought to the attention of the jail officials, and they did nothing, just as new threats have been brought to their attention, and they're going to do nothing. Uh, it, it's one thing to say we took action after the fact, but what are they doing to protect him beforehand? And he shouldn't be punished. You know, one of their solutions for a time was to put him in solitary confinement because he got beat up, he got punished. To the larger thing, the, the allegation regarding these other individuals, uh, the, the New York, they indicted in the uh, Eastern District of New York, saying that they did things to witnesses and threatened witnesses. One of the allegations is years old uh, and had absolutely nothing to do with Mr. Kelly. And the other two are people he doesn't know, he didn't talk to, he didn't email with, he didn't call. They told the feds that they don't know Kelly. Now, if, if some nut job, for lack of a better term, wants to do something because he's a fan, that's not Kelly's fault, and that shouldn't be held against him. And part of what they did here, they argued before the seventh or Second Circuit when we did the appeal, that Kelly was somehow involved. This is an individual who has been locked up in custody. Every phone call, every email, every communication he makes, they know about. And if he was involved, they just said it directly. They can't say it because he's not. It, it's just all smoke and mirrors on the part of the, the federal prosecutors. Okay, so l let me go back to this piece a little bit about um, the idea, and you let me know if it exists in this case, that because he is a high-profile person, that um, many people may want to be taking a shot at him, if you will, or uh, to, to uh, harm him. Are these arguments you're making because it's kind of like a status in the in the jail as well. Is that all part of what your motion is to have him released? 
Sure, it, it, it all plays into it. It's, it's that, it, and it's double-edged being a celebrity. He can't flee because he's a celebrity. Where is he potentially gonna hide? You know, the, the feds made a whole big deal. They said, well, now that everyone has to wear a mask, uh, he's going to put on a mask and he's going to. It's absurd. You know, it's terribly frustrating when you know that you are 100 percent correct. But someone like Robert Kelly is being treated completely different than anyone else who was in the same situation. Anyone else who had these charges and didn't have the notoriety wouldn't be in custody, wouldn't have to wait indefinitely for a trial. They can't give him a trial because he's famous. They are doing trials now, but mm -hmm. they can't accommodate the media, they can't accommodate the public, they can't accommodate the number of witnesses, they can't accommodate how many jurors it will take. All of this is being held against him. And that's mm -hmm. just not right, that's un-American. Steve, I got a, a short period of time, I gotta ask you, I, I, there's so many questions I'd love to ask you, and you're doing a great job on the case from a defense point of view. I saw a tweet that you sent out um, that you didn't know who filed the motion today, but it was not R. Kelly. I'm reading from your tweet um, at uh, SG Crim Law. It came out of an out-of-state address, certified mail. He's in Chicago, you say. He has no access to certified mail. It was legally and factually a farce. Our names were misspelled. It wasn't signed. It's not from him. Somebody responded to you and said, did you actually speak to your client regarding the matter? And you said, yes, Steve, what is going on with that? Are they investigating that? Uh, I don't I don't know what they're doing about that. There was an individual, uh, I spoke to him one day on the phone, he holds himself out as some kind of a paralegal, and he decided that he should file a motion saying that Kelly had never been indicted, which of course we all know is false. Uh, you know, I can't can't help that someone sends something into the court. The court should should have a better system maybe for uh, weeding out these kind of frivolous things. There have been other filings. There have been letters to the judge and so forth that have also been submitted. All right, but this Steve, is the first thing like this. Yeah, first time I ever saw it in 30 years and, and as a head of a prosecutorial agency myself, a uh, very interesting permutation. But Steve, I got to ask this because at the Law and Crime Network, we're always covering these trials. We will be covering yours, I am certain, uh, gavel to gavel. And I always want to know as a, tr a practicing trial attorney, a defense lawyer now, what was the plea offer? Because we understand what the sentencing ranges could be. Can you give us any insight as to what the feds are offering as a plea and, and whether or not you're pushing it to the end, it's going to trial, no, no ifs, ands, or buts, or whether you're trying to negotiate with these multiple jurisdictions? Can you give us any insight, Steve? Please, we'd love to know. Sure, sure. I could tell you that, that he's facing a 10-year mandatory minimum here in the Northern District of Illinois. Uh, not quite as bad in in New York, um, but uh, we have we have had to, you know we always you always have to have discussions. Uh, I can't tell you what those discussions are. I can tell you that right now, full steam ahead. We want a trial date. We want a trial date as soon as possible, and we want to proceed to trial. Steve, what's the ten on? Is it some sort of enti uh, enticement charge or, or no? What? No, on on a. Um, child pornography charge, there's a 10-year mandatory minimum. It's actually 15 now, but because of when this conduct occurred, it was only 10 then. So so, so that's, that's that's in the area of production. That would be in the area of production of child pornography, am I right? Uh, it's production, it's, it's manufacturer production, possession, all sorts and of different and ways of getting to it. Yeah, Steve Greenberg, wow, what an honor to be able to interview you. Thank you so much for your time. I wish I could talk to you about this case for hours, but unfortunately, we got to take a break. Thanks so much, Steve. Thank you. Okay, we'll be right back, folks.